If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try the question before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a picture that's based on the given information. Now the idea in this problem is to find the largest possible area of a rectangle that is basically encased by this right triangle. We can kind of get a sense of what the question is asking us if we slide this point on the rectangle up and down, so to speak, along the triangle here. We're looking for the maximum area of a rectangle that fits inside of this triangle. So why don't we just arbitrarily leave the rectangles, say, right here. And then since we don't know the lengths of the sides of the rectangle, we can label them with some variables. Let's call this direction right here, or this dimension, x, and this dimension right here, y. Now, of course, the area of that rectangle would be the following. And in order to maximize the area of this rectangle, we're going to want to try to get the equation in terms of just a single variable. Right now, you can see we have two variables, x and y. We want the equation to be in terms of just one variable. So that's our next challenge. What we'll want to do first is come up with a label for the length of this side right here. We'll see why in just a moment. But of course, if the entire length of this side here is 3, that's the large triangle side, and this length right here, the side of the rectangle, is y, that would make this length here 3 minus y. So we can go ahead and label that. Now, of course, this side of the rectangle is also x. And the question is, why did we do that? Well, let's focus our attention on this upper triangle here for just a second. And what we'll notice is that this blue triangle is going to be similar to the larger triangle. And to get a better appreciation of that, why don't we redraw the larger triangle? So again, the blue triangle is similar to this large triangle here. And thus, because they're similar, we can write a proportion. We can say that this side, this 3 minus y, is to x as this side, 3, is to 4. So let's write that proportion right over here. What we'll do next is solve this equation for y so that we can substitute into our original equation. So to solve this, we'll have to first cross multiply. We'll then divide both sides by 4. Subtract 3 next. And then divide both sides by negative 1. So let's take this expression for y and plug it into our original equation. And that'll be nice because then we'll have an equation with just a single variable in it. To simplify this equation, we can distribute the x into the brackets. And then, since we're trying to find the largest rectangle, we're trying to optimize, in other words, we're going to have to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. The derivative of the area we can symbolize as just a prime. The derivative of the right side will incorporate just a few basic rules. We'll use the power rule to drag this exponent down and multiply by the coefficient, so that'll give us negative 6 fourths x. We'll subtract 1 from the exponent to just give us x to the first. And then the derivative of 3x, of course, is just 3. Next, we're going to have to set this equation equal to 0. Maybe we could subtract 3 from both sides. Let's multiply both sides by 4. And then divide by negative 6. And we get x equals 2. Now, technically, in order to ensure that this is a largest rectangle, we'll have to do the first derivative test to make sure that this value of x is indeed producing a maximum value for the area. So let's do the first derivative test. And we can do that by plotting 2 on a number line. What we'll do is we'll choose a value less than 2, such as 1, and a value greater than 2, such as 3, and we'll plug them into the first derivative. Let's bring the first derivative back into the picture here, just as a reminder. Now, if we plug 1 into the first derivative, we get a positive result. So we can say that the derivative is positive all the way up to 2. And when the derivative is positive, the function is increasing, of course. Now, we can also plug 3 into the first derivative. And when we do so, we see the derivative is negative for all values beyond 2. So when the derivative is negative, that means the function is decreasing. So therefore, right at x equals 2, we can see that we've achieved a maximum value for the area. So we know indeed at x equals 2, the area is the largest possible value. Now the question said to actually find that area. So let's go ahead and take x equals 2 and plug it into the area formula. Recall that the area of the rectangle was given by this formula here, so all we'll do is plug 2 in. And when we do that, we get a result of 3. Now, since the measurements were in centimeters, the area would be in centimeters squared. And that is indeed the correct answer.